Hi, and welcome to Martini Monday. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do a tag, not something I do very often on my channel, but actually something that I'd like to do more. So if you're curious to see what my answers are to the beauty resolutions tag, then please keep on watching. Well, hi everyone and welcome. Today is Martini Monday. I will link the recipe down below. I'm trying this for the very first time. This is not a recipe that came from my favorite website. This just came from a random search on Google because I realized I'm in the mood for something with chartreuse in it. So I just Googled a gin chartreuse martini and that's basically what this is. It is just gin, chartreuse, and a little bit of vermouth. I haven't actually tried it yet, so let's taste. Oh, that is quite nice, strong and nice. So I wanted today to do a tag that a lot of people did back in December and at the beginning of January, and it's been on my list to film, and it's the beauty resolutions tag. This tag, I believe, was originally created by Mel Thompson, who unfortunately is no longer with us, and I think this was something she did at the very end of 2020 going into 2021. This tag came back into the beauty world when Kelsey Brianna J and Samantha March redid it back in December, and I have seen quite a lot of people people do it since, including a lot of my friends here on YouTube. So I figured I'll give it a try. I am not usually one to come up with quick and creative answers, but at the same time, I also don't want to have a script. Um, I kind of glanced through the questions, but I figured I kind of want these answers to be as genuine and off the cuff as possible. So we'll see what happens. I don't consider myself the most eloquent person. We'll see how my brain ends up functioning today and what kind of answers it comes up with. Before we jump into the beauty resolutions tag i just wanted to welcome you to my channel or if you're returning then welcome back thank you so much for being here for those of you that haven't met me before hi my name is natalia i'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty and 2023 is a year of discovery for me i am discovering a lot of items in my collection my makeup collection for the very first time i'm rediscovering a lot of old products that i haven't used in a while i'd like to figure out what i actually enjoy and what needs to leave so there's probably going to be a lot of mini declutters along the way and a lot of testing new products at least new to me not necessarily new to the market i'm not necessarily on a full no buy but definitely a low buy and i'm definitely trying to be very mindful of what i bring into my collection so if you're interested in that type of content then i hope that you will subscribe and join our family here and without any further ado let's get into the beauty resolutions tag so i know it's basically nearing the end of january which is why i figured this would be perfect for a January Martini Monday because as I've mentioned in my previous Martini Mondays, I kind of wanted January to be an overall view of where I'm starting the year. So we started off with a makeup inventory, then we did all of our different baskets of shame where I showed you guys all of the eyeshadow palettes I've never used in my collection as well as all the other various products. If you are interested in any of that before you see this, I am going to go ahead and create a playlist of all of my Martini Mondays and I'll link that down in the description box so you can always revisit any of my previous Martini Mondays as well as the martinis that I have had thus far. So speaking of that, let me take a sip and then let's get into this beauty resolutions tag. Mm, I'm really enjoying that, but I am glad that I made myself a small one because this is quite potent, delicious, but potent. Okay, so as I said, I don't have any answers. I just have the questions in my little book here because I do film on my phone, so I can't really be looking at it while I'm filming, but Mel created this tag as a way to reflect on what back then was 2020 and go into 2021 with some new beauty resolutions. And I figured what a perfect way to start 2023. I know we're three weeks in, but it's still the beginning of the year. And if you've done the this tag, please let me know in the comments. If I haven't watched it, I will gladly do so. Right. Question one, something you do regularly in your makeup routine that you will try to stop. 
And since this is the first question I wrote down in my notebook, I definitely had a little bit longer to kind of ponder on this. And while I wish I could come up with like a specific makeup technique maybe that I should stop doing or something like that, I'm not really that well versed in different makeup techniques. I'm definitely a creature of habit. And I think one of the habits that I would like to stop and which goes across the board most of my life um, is having this all or nothing mentality when it comes to a lot of things, including makeup. I think maybe also from the fact that I learned makeup through YouTube and I have been watching it for many, many years, I seem to have this idea that if I wear makeup, it has to be a full beat. I guess because that's the majority of what I consume, whether it's Instagram photos, a lot of them are very involved and intricate, whether it's YouTube videos where a lot of us try and test a you know, bunch of products, so we usually we have the full beat you know we might not contour in bronze or we might not do certain specific steps but overall every part of the kind of traditional makeup routine is present and i'd like to break away from that in 2023 to allow me to do quicker makeup looks and therefore allow me to wear makeup a bit more often i am not a daily makeup wearer to begin with i as i mentioned at the beginning of the video for any of you new to my channel i'm a concert pianist so of course when i perform yes i wear makeup but on the daily my day job is running a music school and teaching children private piano lessons since six days a week. And to be honest, not that I'm trying to be some sort of a, you know, martyr or something and a huge role model for the kids, but aside from the fact that I don't really have the time on the daily to dedicate a half an hour or an hour to makeup. I also don't really want my kids to see me in makeup on the daily because as cheesy as it sounds, I kind of want them to have a more natural approach to life whenever possible because we don't get enough of that. Pretty much everything we consume is filtered, edited, touched up, and I think young people especially are exposed to that. So a part of me sometimes even chooses not to put on makeup on purpose just so my students see that that's okay and that for a lot of people that is the norm. I would like to though find a balance. I would like to find some sort of a very quick routine so that I don't have to allot a lot of time for the days that I do want to wear makeup and so that I normalize for myself the concept of for example if I want to wear a bright lipstick that day to be okay with doing that without putting foundation on or to be okay with not doing an eye look and just you know quickly throwing on some mascara and some blush and running out the door i'm just not that person usually if i'm going to do my makeup i'm actually going to do the full beat i mean as i said not every step of course i'm not gonna do the whole kardashian 20 step situation but the majority of basic steps and i'd like to figure out a way to compromise even for filming and maybe even especially for filming because I don't have that much time and if I want to be consistent at this I have to let go of some of the perfectionism that I am for now still carrying with me I have to be okay with not putting on a full face and sometimes maybe even coming on here barefaced just to be able to chat with you guys. I'm not really good at putting on makeup and talking at the same time. I get distracted. I lose my trail of thought. It's not really for me. I know a lot of people are very, very good at, you know, chatty get ready with me's and I'm not saying I'm never going to do them, but I, I don't do them very often for a reason. So since it takes me a little bit of extra time to prepare for the filming process because I first to do my makeup off camera, I want to allow myself to sometimes do less. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if this is like a cheating answer because it's not like something I do as a specific step, but it is definitely something I regularly do in my makeup routine because if I do wear makeup, that is my routine. And it usually starts with primer and not often ends with setting spray. That is one step I do forget. But you guys, I think, get the drift. Question two, a brand you will try for the first time. So in my case, I don't want to commit to a brand that I don't have yet in my collection because as I said, I'm trying to make more conscientious purchases, but 
I will tell you that I definitely have a few brands in my collection that I haven't tried yet. They're brand new products that are still sitting around. And in fact, one of them is right directly in front of me. Totally coincidentally, I did not plan this, but I purchased the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette back around when it came out. So I guess 2021, I haven't used it yet. So there's a brand that I would like to try in 2023 for sure. I purchased a bunch of Copacetic Cosmetics single eyeshadows also in 2021 uh, when they were doing, and I think they still do this, and I'm just trying to stay off their website not to tempt me to buy any more, but they once a month do a $2 Tuesday where I think they release five of their eyeshadows and sell them for $2 each. And I participated in that, I wanna say the entire year of 2021. I don't know if I missed even a single month, I can't remember. So so you guys can do the math at how many eyeshadow single pans I have from Copacetic Cosmetics that I have yet to use. So there's already a second brand that I would like to try this year without even having to pull out my credit card, leave my house, or spend a penny because I already have spent all that money and just haven't gotten around to using those products. And I'm sure if I dig through my baskets of shame, I can probably come up with one or two more brands. I just can't think of any right now off the top of my head, but yeah those are two right there so we're gonna go with those question number three a brand you will let go of in 2022 honestly any brand that i will let go of i already have i can't remember if i've discussed this in any of the videos or maybe i've discussed this just in my head or talking to a screen reacting to a friend's video because i know a lot of people actually did separate videos on this and i guess if you want me to do that uh let me know oh i know i know when i talked about this i actually filmed a really extensive favorite fall eyeshadow palettes video back in october and then i had uh huge technical issues with my two very old computers and um iMovie because the upgrade just did not work with my old machines and it wasn't until i managed to clear one of my computers pretty much of everything that i was able to get back to editing which is why i'm back now more regularly i was hoping to come back back in october and i just couldn't figure out how actually to edit. <laughs> in that video, I actually discussed a few brands that I then already decided not to really support and let go of. And for now, I two that come into my mind definitely still stand. One is ColourPop for various reasons. I mean, there was, of course, the Harry Potter release that created um, a lot of controversy with good reason. For me, ColourPop is easy to let go of because I've never really been into ColourPop to begin with. They've always been overwhelming to me. Even when they first came out with their lippy sticks and then their Super Shock shadows, there was already just so many colors and so many choices. Pretty much anybody who was anyone here on YouTube was promoting and pushing ColourPop. I don't know, somehow, I mean, I did try a few of their Super Shocks and I have decluttered all of them since, probably because they dried up, I don't even remember. I have a few ColourPop eyeshadow palettes, I have a few of their highlighters, which I very much enjoy. So I'm not saying I'm not going to use the products that I already have, but honestly, I've been tired of the weekly releases for so long that it really has to be a very special and personal release to me it has to pull on my nostalgia heartstrings or whatever it might be to get me to purchase one of their releases with just the amount of bombardment that we get from ColourPop and the fact that that to me they're essentially the fast fashion of makeup it's just it's too much it's too much for me I get overwhelmed and I think for the most part again unless something so spectacular comes out of there I don't see myself really buying a lot of if any color Pop this year. And then the second brand is, is more of a personal choice, just a stance. And I know that some people say, oh, well, it hasn't been proven. It was just one post on Facebook. And it's actually very unfortunate because I know the last two eyeshadow palettes this brand released has been getting great reviews, was the top of many people's 2022 eyeshadow palettes that they've tried, you know, the rankings. And that's ABH. And the only reason I just right now refuse to actually purchase anything from my BH. Again, I will use what I have, but I'm not gonna put my money into the brand at the moment, if ever, you know, depending on, I guess, how things progress. And that's because the owner, who herself is from Eastern Europe and from former communist regime, seems to be supporting um, 
or at least seems to be okay with the things that are currently happening in Russia and Ukraine. And while maybe it is bold to say that she is pro-Putin and a Putin supporter, um, because as I said, there's really only one post that sort of proves that. It is, of course, all alleged. But, you know, people... <sighs> People that have a strong stance on this one way or another would not like or comment on something that swings the other way. So if you're not supporting Putin, you're never going to like a post, even if it's by a friend of yours, I feel like personally, at least I wouldn't, that is not in alignment of that. So considering that I am myself a Russian and that I have so many friends in both Russia and Ukraine or are from Russia and Ukraine regardless uh, have family there have friends there I just I can't I can't bring myself right now to it, it it's it's personal this this is personal and as much as you know I would have loved to try the recent eyeshadow palettes like that's that's so minute in comparison to what is happening in that part of the world that I just cannot bring myself to drop any of my money um, into a brand that has questionable stance on that specific worldly topic at the moment. I know that was not very eloquent. As I said, I, I struggle with stringing things together in a smooth, cohesive way, but hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from. And as I said, it is very personal, so it's not even easy to talk about. Okay, question number four. What makeup technique would you like to learn or try once? Oh gosh, considering I'm not a makeup artist at all, and I still, even though I've been wearing makeup for years and watching YouTube for a decade, I still consider myself pretty much a makeup newbie. There's probably tons that I'm not even going to be able to think of off the top of my head but one that always comes to mind when i think of things like that and i even mentioned it in a recent video is a proper wing with liquid eyeliner i could never do that i tried granted only a few times so i'm sure that's partially why i haven't been able to do that i haven't really practiced it enough but i just feel like no matter how many tutorials i watch i still don't understand i don't understand how people can make them look more equal than i ever was able to my eyes are definitely and I know everybody's eyes are different, but my eyes to me just look completely different, especially in the area where like you need to do that little flick. So I would like to see if I can practice that a bit more this year and um, get at least one proper wing out of this whole thing. <laughs> I've always wanted to maybe try to do something with my brows that's a bit more elaborate than just putting a little bit of pencil in some sparse areas and then throwing a colored gel over them, which is essentially all I do. But I don't know, brows really intimidate me and I kind of feel like if I do the like the really drawn in brows I'm really not gonna like it because even though I do like bold and fun eyeshadow I like blush but brows somehow brows scare me I don't know what it is maybe I'll give something else a try maybe try a different brow product this year but I'm definitely a creature of habit and a very simplistic one at that when it comes to brows all right question number five a product that you will leave in 2022 this was a really hard one for me too. I was trying to think about this while getting ready for this video. I honestly can't think of any specific product that I would leave. I can't think of something that like I really hated so much in 2022 that I absolutely need to let it go. For me really it's more about letting go of things in my collection that I have had for a really long time that don't serve me anymore. My Basket of Doom series is the that's essentially why I created that series is to allow me to enable me to do that to give me the opportunity to try a product one or two more times something I haven't used in forever something that I have an inkling probably is either too old or just won't work anymore because my preferences have changed but because I have a hard time letting go of things I always feel like I need to give a product one more chance before parting away. I kind of feel like my basket of doom series is almost like the answer to this entire question there's really not a specific product, but there are tons of things lying around my table here. I look at them and I think, hmm, I probably should let that go soon. I've had it for a while. I haven't used it in so long, but there's always that voice in my head that's like, you, you should use it one more time. You really should give it a chance. What if, what if now you love it more than you did back then? Or what if you've forgotten how great it is? I'm really hoping that my Basket of Doom series will allow me to part ways with actually quite a lot of things in 2023. Question number six, 
product you will give a second chance to. Well, this sort of rolls right in, right? I mean, so many products that I can think of that I could give a second chance to. One that I right away thought of, and it's funny because we mentioned ColourPop earlier, I mentioned my Basket of Doom earlier, and I've talked about this product and even compared it to something I recently bought from Huda Beauty. I recently did a video trying a bunch of Huda Beauty products and also hauling what I bought from them during their Black Friday sales. And there's a palette I bought from Huda Beauty that reminded me of this ColourPop Lush Life palette. This was really, really popular and really, really hyped in, was it 2021? I think is when it released. I thought it was a really cool color story. I was so excited to get this. And then I tried it a couple of times back in 2021. And I don't know, I didn't really love it. I'd like to give this a second chance this year. It'll probably make it into a future Basket of Doom. Because honestly, if I don't enjoy it, and especially if I compare it to, it was one of the wild palettes. I can't remember what animal. But regardless, there's a very similar palette that I now own that I haven't tried yet. So I'd like to do a comparison of the two, see which one I end up liking better. We'll see if this palette survives this year or not. Okay. Question seven, a resolution for your YouTube channel. Oh goodness, I guess I have a few. As some of you might know, I started my channel in 2020 and I started off as a no buy year. So 2020 was an entire year where I did not purchase any makeup or skincare. I then, for personal personal reasons left YouTube towards the later half of 2021, posted very sporadically in 2022, and really only returned to YouTube just a few weeks ago at the beginning of January. It's hard for me to know exactly what resolutions I have because I'm still kind of getting my footing and trying to get a routine again, but that would be one of my resolutions, is to try to be as consistent as possible. Now, I know my life, I know my schedule, I know it's not going to be possible 100% of the time. Even with these Martini Mondays, I know there are going to be weeks where I'm not going to have time to film and edit in, in time for a Monday. But I'd like to do my best and I'd like to plan ahead and schedule and get better at those things. I'd like to get faster at editing. And then of course, as far as just like a, you know, a, a numbers goal, I definitely would love to reach a thousand subscribers this year. And if the watch hours also come with that, um, get monetized. Gosh, that would be that would be amazing. I would really love that because I think even though it's pennies on the dollar or whatever, I think I will I will kind of look at this from a slightly different angle at that point. I don't think anything will ever change. This will always be just a hobby for me. But I don't know. I I think it'll add this sort of element of. I don't, I don't even know how to word it. I think it'll feel like, you know, I've really accomplished something with this and it will make me even more excited to film and chat with you guys. And I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining that for those of you that are monetized, let me know if your mindset changed at all when that happened. But somehow, I don't know, somehow there's that something exciting to look forward to. And definitely for me, 1000 subscribers and getting monetized is one of those things. The last resolution is kind Kind of self-evident based on a lot of other things that I've already touched on in this video and in the previous ones from this month and that is I'd like this channel to kind of be an oasis for those of us that really don't want to be buying every new release and for that to be perfectly okay and accepted and celebrated I'd like to try to be more creative with my makeup and you know I was talking to a friend actually earlier today on Instagram and we were saying how some of the joys that we had when we first got into makeup has gotten lost a little bit. It's been so heavy in the past few years on the buying aspect that a lot of the joy started coming for people from buying and less so from creating looks and they can be any sort of look, simple looks, complicated looks, trying new things, trying new color combinations, exploring different formulas testing things out, seeing what works for our skin and what doesn't. I would like to do more of that. I would like to really dive into not the science of makeup because I'm certainly no scientist over here. I'm, I'm an emotional musician, but I'd like to. I'd like to be a little bit more educated on what I already have, educated on what works for my skin, what works for my eye shape, what works for my face shape. I sort of wing it every single 
time or try to recreate looks that other people do without even thinking twice well does this work for me you know the only thing that i have had to be more aware of just because my skin doesn't really give me a choice is the fact that i am aging you know i'm, I'm 41 going to be 42 later this year and of course i cannot wear certain things that 20 year olds can or i can't even wear certain things that i was able to three four five years ago all of those things i definitely want that to be a part of my youtube channel i want us to have those conversations because we're all living through that we're all changing evolving and i'd like it to be more about being excited about the makeup rather than being excited to own the makeup hope that makes sense question eight i am long-winded I, I can only imagine how long we've already been here let's have a drink question eight do you have any skincare resolutions well, since I just talked about aging, perfect segue, yes, I do. I have several skincare resolutions. One, be more consistent with my skincare routine. I have not been in the best of places mentally and just in my life in general for several years. And I kind of go like this. I'm a roller coaster with my skincare. In the past year and a half to two years, it's been very on and off. And I'd like to find some sort of routine that works. And again, it doesn't have to be a 12-step program every single evening. I need to try to not make it all or nothing. I need to find a few products that I use consistently and then on nights when I have the time and the energy and the desire to expand on that, to do just that. So that's one, to find something consistent that works and that I actually stick to. Two, I have purchased um, last year, I think, or maybe the year before, I think it was last year, a few tools, shall we say, and I'd like to use those more regularly. So like I bought an ice roller I bought the gua sha, or is it called gua, gua sha, gua sha? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't actually ever know how to pronounce that word. I don't know what it is about it, but I struggle with that word. But I have one of those tools that I almost never use. I also have a micro needling tool that I've used a few times, but I'm not consistent with it. So anything that I already have, that I already own, I would like to incorporate into my routine more often and actually see if it makes any difference before moving on to maybe something else. Because my dream is to one day get an LED mask, but those are expensive and I worry that I'm not going to be consistent with it. If I can't even do something as simple as a morning ice roller that takes three seconds to pop out of the freezer, then am I really going to invest 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes every other day to put on a whole mask? I want to make sure I get into a routine first and prove to myself that I'm capable of something like that before I start investing even more money into my skincare. And then the third thing is I would like to sometime in 2023 save up for a facial. I haven't had a facial in a couple of years. I had one um, which was a gift sometime, I want to say in 20. 21 maybe 2020 or 2021 i can't remember i know you're supposed to get them of course more often than once every two years but a gal's got to start somewhere so i would like to at some point later this year go for a facial that's sort of on my wish list another thing that's on my wish list but frankly i a don't want to spend the money and b i'm actually kind of scared of it and worried that i'll hate it is botox it's something i've thought about for several years and i i don't know haven't decided yet on that one if you want to chime in and and uh, let me know your thoughts on that. I would love to hear it. The more opinions, the better. We'll see. I initially thought it was going to be a birthday gift to myself for my 40th birthday. And then I chickened out. And now I'm about to turn 42 in June. So we'll see if that happens or not. Question nine is a YouTube beauty challenge that you will partake in. And I uh, have been watching YouTube for a long time. So I remember like all the crazy challenges, the not your hands challenge, the, you know, all the highlighter challenge, the no mirror challenge. I mean, there, there were so many of them and some of them were hilarious and really fun. So I, maybe I'll research and see if there are any that I will be brave enough to try this year. But the one that came to mind immediately, because it is actually something that I've participated in both on and off screen for many years, is panning challenges. I have not yet figured out which one I'm going to do this year, but I actually still would like to do one, even if it's a very small one. I did a panning 
uh, challenge back in 2020 and 2021. And uh, in 2022, I did not because as I said, I was not on YouTube regularly and I wasn't even motivated all that much to do it off camera. And I'd like to figure out something to do this year. I know again, I know we're already towards the end of January, but I don't care if I started in February, like it's my, it's my panning challenge. So I will be okay with starting it a month late if that's what it ends up being. All right, and question number 10 and the final question is a beauty habit that you need to stop this year. To me, this is kind of, I guess, similar to question one. I mean, question one was, I guess, something you do regularly in your makeup routine. And this is just a beauty habit that I need to stop this year. I don't even know. I mean, yeah, honestly, the only thing again that comes to mind is not to feel like I have to put on all the makeup um, <laughs> and to allow myself to like do just the minimum once in a while. I'm trying to think of something interesting and I really can't. Oh, I know. I really should. Well, this is something I should do rather than stop. Well, I, I guess I should stop waiting until every single brush in my house is dirty before washing my brushes. And I know I'm not the only one to say this. I think I've seen a couple of other people mention this, but that is definitely a beauty habit. I need to stop. I need to stop with the using like I wait until I have no more brushes that I actually enjoy and then I wash my brushes so another thing I need to do when that does happen is pay attention to the remaining brushes that I avoid at all possible costs and get rid of those brushes and on that note I think we are done. If you've done this tag, let me know if you don't have a channel and if you have any favorite questions that you want to share answers to, please do that in the comments section. And other than that, let's have another sip of this delicious chartreuse, gin chartreuse martini. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, that this was in some ways entertaining. I hope that something made sense. <laughs> and I also hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. If you haven't and you would like to, please subscribe. Please give this video a like and comment and say hello. I hope that you are all staying safe and healthy, that you are continuing to take care of yourself and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Cheers and bye guys.